Hello and welcome back to my channel and happy Halloween. Today I have asked your spirit guides uh, just to give me some general messages and this can be advice, it could be some insight from spirit, it could be just an acknowledgement of where you currently are or what you have accomplished. Uh, it could really be anything, I'm leaving it pretty open-ended uh, and in this reading I am taking reversals just so that we can get a bit more of a specific picture uh, of what spirit is trying to say, if that makes sense. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and pick a pile. We have an orange spider, a green spider, and a purple spider. For this reading today I have asked your spirit guides for some general advice. Uh, maybe some information about your current situation, uh, some guidance on what you can do, uh, if, if you need to shift your energies, which I am kind of seeing here in, in your cards today. Uh, and I want to say I had intended to do only a six card spread uh, with, you know, three cards on the top and then three clarifiers and then a monology card, which is why there's not a ton of space in my setup. Uh, however, I did feel called when I was shuffling the cards to take four cards. I kept hearing, take four, take four, do four. So that's what I did. Uh, and then we're going to do that for all the piles because, you know, I want to be fair about it. So I just wanted to say if it seems a little cramped, that's why. Uh, but I think, you know, judging from these cards, uh, I would say there is an important message here. So I'm going to start uh, at the left here with your Nine of Swords card. And I would see that as being like your current energy. Uh, and then a progression, you know, the Nine of Swords, the Five of Cups might be your current energy, and then the Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, I would see that as your Spirit Guide's way of saying this is what's coming towards you. So this is your current energy, but this is what's coming towards you um, in here, and the bottom row are just clarifying the top row. So we're starting with the Nine of Swords, which talks about anxiety, sleepless nights, worrying about things, being kind of stuck in our heads about something, having dark thoughts feeling like you're never going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, however, I do want to point out, whenever I see this card, I do want to point out the 9 is the number right before the 10. So even though it might feel like we've been in this energy for a long time and it might seem like there's no end in sight, the 9 is, is almost at the end of the cycle. So uh, I want to give that interpretation. Um, and I also want to say uh, with this, this card, the picture on this card in particular, uh, this person on the card might feel like they're trapped. I, I'd see this person as feeling like, you know, kind of they're stuck in, in their thoughts or stuck in, the, in this dark place in this tower. However, there are no bars on this window. You know, there's a, a potential reality where she could get herself out of this situation, but it feels to me like the energy is so heavy that she either doesn't believe she can, or maybe she doesn't believe she deserves to, or for whatever reason, she's just not moving towards that open window. And the open window has a bird in it. And the birds typically symbolize like freedom, the freedom of flight. So uh, I wanted to point that out uh, just to, you know, to put a little bit of hope in there if you are in this kind of Knight of Swords energy. Uh, and also I would understand why you would be in that energy because the clarifier we have for this card is justice in reverse. So there's been some sort of injustice that has happened to you perhaps recently. And I would also see this as your spirit guide's way of saying that, yes, whatever happened was, was, it was injustice. It was not fair to you and you didn't deserve it. And it makes sense that that would be contributing to this, this nine of swords energy. And as I said, like the, the message of the nine of swords, especially on this card, I feel like, you know, there is a sun coming up over the horizon. I see with, with your spread here, that this, your spirit guides are saying this feeling is not going to last forever. It makes sense why you feel this way and you are justified in feeling this way because there has been some injustice that has happened in your life. There's been some unfairness. Uh, maybe, you know, with, uh, with the next two cards we have, I'm hearing the message, somebody else not pulling their weight because we have the, the Five of Cups in reversed here for you. And the Five of Cups upright can talk about you know, I don't know if you can see on the card because it's upside down, but uh, the, there's a person and, and, you know, she's looking at the three cups that have spilled. She's not paying attention to the two cups on the table that are still intact, right? And so it's being focused on what we've lost rather than what we still have. That's usually the message when it's upright. When it's reversed, the way that, that I would usually interpret that is we're having a lot of trouble letting go of the things that we've lost and... and 
staying in that energy to an unhealthy degree, kind of like dwelling and lingering in that, which might be contributing to your Nine of Swords here. Um, and with it being clarified by the Page of Pentacles in reverse, the Pentacles is a suit about like dedication and commitment to something. And when this page is, shows up reversed, that can talk about somebody not being committed or not pulling their weight, as I said. It can talk about, because it's pentacles, it can talk about like a coworker or somebody that you had started a project with. Um, or it could be talking about a romantic situation, you know, what, whatever resonates for you. But in whatever the situation was, there's someone who, who was not investing into it the way that they had promised you that they would. They're not upholding their end of the bargain. And again, that's like a clear connection with this justice in reversed card. Like it, they were not willing to follow through with something and you were counting on them. And so that's created this five of cups in reversed energy that's like, well, why did this happen? You know, why, why, did, why did this happen to me? This was, this was very unfair and I didn't deserve it and it's, contributing to this feeling, I think, where um, you might feel like the, the person on this bed in the, in the Nine of Swords card where you're just like ruminating over and over on it in your head uh, and not really seeing the bird in the window, you know, or the, the sunrise in the window. So I wanted to, to point that out because I think if there's, if there's advice in the first four cards here, I think it would be, you know, uh, that maybe it's time to put your energy towards letting go of whatever happened because at this point with the five of cups in reverse and the nine of swords you're only hurting yourself by by continuing to hold on to it and it's like that phrase that popped into my head is um holding a grudge is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die you know unfortunately it does do damage to us when we hold on to something for too long uh and I think it's in a message from, from your spirit guides is to do whatever work you need to do in order to work on releasing that. And I also want to throw in there, you don't need to forgive this person. Uh, and if you do, I mean, I think it is healthy to forgive people even when they, they've done something terrible because um, it's part of healing us. Like uh, for me, it, um, part of my healing has been forgiving people. Uh, and that doesn't mean that I'm excusing whatever they did. It doesn't mean that it makes it okay. Whatever this injustice was, was not okay. And, and as I said, like, you did not deserve it. There was not a fair outcome here. And it's okay to acknowledge that. And at the same time, forgiveness for me is about being able to let go of it because I don't want it to eat at me. You know, I don't want it to eat me up inside and keep me in this dark place. I want to be able to release it so that I can go to the bird in the window and watch the sunrise and feel my hope coming back. You know, not every situation is going to be like this. There are going to be things that are, are very positive that are coming towards you. And I can see in your in your spread here that that is true for you. However, I think the advice from Spirit is the way to get out of this Nine of Swords uh, mindset is to refocus yourself on the cups that you still have in your Five of Cups, like those two cups that are still on the table. Uh, maybe doing like a, a gratitude practice might help you here just to, to refocus your energy, kind of shift away from um, this, you know, being so focused on what went wrong or how somebody let you down um, that it's causing you misery. So I hope that's helpful. I'm not I'm trying to be judgmental. I've definitely been in this energy before and I, I know what it's like when, when someone screws us over. You know, and uh, and then to have to be like, well, why do I have to do the emotional work here? You know, I wasn't the one who caused the problem. However, uh, I mean, that's part of like uh, personal growth that, that I've had to accept. You know, it's like, and every time I do work on that and work on, you know, with forgiveness, letting go and that kind of thing, I always feel better afterwards. So it is, it's something that um, is really for you. You know, it's not for the other person. So uh, I hope that's helpful. I want to move on to, because then the next two cards we have, uh, you know, I was like, wow, this is, this is exciting. We have the Nine of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles here. So um, I'll get into the clarifiers in a second, but I want to point out, like, this is a clear, clear, clear message from your spirit guides. You have a lot of financial abundance coming towards you. 
uh, this it's it's going to come in for you and I do the two clarifiers there are both reversed so I think that this is spirits way of saying like this is what is currently blocking these things from coming in but they are going to come in for you that's a it's a guarantee that you're going to see this financial abundance it might just be like currently blocked or delayed because of these two clarifiers down here so uh, I'm going to start with the nine of pentacles the nine of pentacles for me because it's usually, in, in a lot of cards, uh, is usually depicted with a, a tree. Like the, you can see in this card, the, the, there's a tree that where the pentacles are, have grown and they're ready to be harvested. And so the way that, that I think about this card is my pentacles are ready to be harvested. You know, I planted my ace of pentacles in the ground, it's grown up through all the numbers, and now we're at nine where the, the harvest is ready and I'm ready for all of my hard, the hard work I put into growing this tree, I get to harvest these pentacles. Now I put the hard work in and it's paying off. You know, it's, it's I'm, I'm getting what I deserve out of this situation. And that's why I think it's important in relation to the justice in reverse card here. I think there's a message from your spirit guides that maybe whatever this situation didn't was didn't work out because you had this reversed page of pentacles who was acting in bad faith. However, it's important to recognize that you are gonna get to a place where, you know, you're you're still on the path to getting to a place where you are going to be har harvesting the pentacles that you deserve, if that makes I know I said pentacles so many times, but you're going to be like your, your hard work is going to pay off um, it, with like material abundance. That's what I'm, I'm seeing with the, the nine and the ten here. It's, it's specifically material abundance uh, and financial abundance. Um, so the nine of pentacles here is being clarified by the empress in reverse. So when I talked about these like this abundance wants to come in for you and you deserve it you've worked really hard for it this is going to be what you deserve that you didn't get in in whatever this injustice situation was it is going to come in for you uh however what is currently blocking it right now is this empress in reverse and i do also want to point out these two cards the the nine of pentacles and the, the empress like they have very similar energy, similar colors. The Empress is standing in front of a tree that looks very similar to the Pentacles tree. So I would take that as a message that once you can put this Empress upright and be in the Empress upright energy, all of these Pentacles are going to come in. It's And it's going to be, once you make that shift, it's going to be quick and easy. It's just going to flow in. Like the, the everything is going to start bearing fruit. So getting into the details of the Empress card, the Empress card represents the Divine Feminine. And that can talk about being in a fruitful and receptive energy. It's a, a little bit more of a, a passive energy. It's an energy of having faith that the things that you deserve are going to come towards you. And it's in reverse right now, which means there could be a message here that maybe because of this five of cups in reverse and being focused on what you've lost in this situation and being really in your head about it, uh, you might be in an imbalanced energy where, where you are too much in your like divine masculine energy, like an imbalanced divine masculine, where you might be trying too hard to control the situation or being very worried uh, about your financial situations or, or never seeing the, the payoff that you deserve, which is a totally understandable. A hundred percent, I could understand why you feel that way. However, the message from your spirit guides here is the way to bring in all of this abundance is to stop worrying so much about it. Uh, and to, I feel like once you, you can work on releasing and letting go of whatever happened in these first four cards, uh, that's going to help put you in this Empress energy of I am going to receive what I need and to be in that in that receptive energy I don't need to force it. I don't need to be overly controlling I don't need to be so worried about the outcome that I can't let things flow in the way that they're meant to um, And what I feel like once you get to that where when this Empress is upright as I said like once once you get there it's good. It's just going to flow. It's just going to flow right in. And you're going to be feeling like the person on this Nine of Pentacles card just sitting in your lounge chair, reading a book, and like, I don't have to worry about it. It's coming in for me, and I, I know that, and I have faith about that. Because I deserve it. 
that's what I'm seeing with the nine of pentacles. And then we have the 10 of pentacles. <laughs> so it's like, you know, the nine of pentacles was, was good enough. And then we have the 10 in addition to that. So I'd see that as like your spirit guide saying like, don't worry, not only are you going to get what you deserve and what you've worked really hard for and your efforts are going to pay off, you're going to get more than that too. You're going to get like your, your happily ever after when it comes to your financial abundance. Because you can see on this card, it's about, there's a message specifically with the Ten of Pentacles about family. And I mean, it is a pentacle, so it's talking usually about like uh, family money uh, or creating like a, a financial legacy. Um, and the way that I would interpret this is you're going to be making so much money <laughs> that you're going to be able to like start a, a trust fund for your kids, if that's something that applies to you, or you're going to be able to create a, a legacy or a generational wealth like and i might not always say that when this card comes up but because it's right next to the the nine and the ten like that's a clear indication to me we're talking about like an insane level of financial abundance coming towards you so I, there is a message here not to worry your financial dreams whatever they are whether they involve a family of your own whether they involve maybe being able to take care of your parents whether they involve you know whatever family means to you specifically there's a, a message here you're not going to have to worry about money anymore and that's that's coming towards you and what is currently blocking it from coming in for you right now. Um, you know, I also see this as, this is not like a super tough blockage here. Uh, like, as I said, with the Empress, like, I think that the Empress is really just about working on letting go, which we also saw in the first parts of the, of the cards. And then with the Six of Swords in reverse, the Six of Swords upright is talking about transitions. It's about um, having being able to let go of the five of swords and move forward you know um if we're talking about it upright and that energy is currently being blocked so there's resistance here from you when it comes to moving forward into a new phase into a new cycle into doing whatever steps you need to do to as i said there's a theme here about letting go you know there's um a refusal here to kind of maybe let go of whatever put you in this nine of swords energy what, whatever three cups you're you're mourning on the five of good there's an energy here of whatever it is is holding you back from all of this abundance that wants to come in for you and it is going to come in for you however you're currently this blockage is currently delaying it so uh, I think there's definitely a lot of very clear advice from your spirit guides here to work on releasing and letting go and being in a mental space where you are willing to move forward. And sometimes all that takes is a shift of perspective because, you know, as I said, with the first two cards, the Nine of Swords and the Five of Cups in reverse, there's a message with both of these cards uh, that, you know, all is not lost. You know, it's it might not be as dark as it seems right now. Because as, as I said, like the, that bird in the window to me is an indication, like the, the person on the card's not looking at that, but it's still there. You know, there's still something to be hopeful about. And then the, you know, with the, the five of cups in reverse, you know, there, there, you still have two full cups on the table that didn't fall over, you know, and you can choose to kind of turn around and, and start being, I don't want to say that it sounds harsh, uh, but it made me practice gratitude for what you do have. And sometimes for me, um, when I'm feeling in that energy, it can be hard. It can be really hard to make that shift because especially when I'm, I feel very justified in, in feeling this way, it's like, well, you know, I don't, I can, you know, it's, it's not fair and it, it, it hurts. And, you know, I don't want to have to be the one always doing the work here. Um, however, I found that sometimes doing like a fake it till you make it thing with gratitude has really worked for me. Um, and that can sometimes just be like when I'm feeling in a very like, you know, why did this happen to me kind of energy uh, to kind of say, okay, I'm going to take 30 seconds, think about three things that I'm grateful for in this moment. And that could be something really simple, something like, you know, might, might seem quote unquote silly. Uh, like, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, 
you know, that it's not raining right now. I'm grateful that I'm going to be, that I have a steak that I can cook for dinner. I'm grateful uh, that I, I'm grateful for my cat because uh, he keeps me company, you know, and, and I found that even taking that the little bit of time to, to do that is like sometimes, yes, I feel a little corny or silly doing that or it doesn't make me feel better immediately. However, when I build the practice of that, it does help me refocus my energy and I do end up feeling better in the long run. So I don't know if that's helpful for you. It's just a little bit of extra advice there. Uh, but as I said, I am seeing in the cards that uh, this period of time is not going to last forever. There, There is sunlight on the horizon. You, you do have you still have two cups here, uh, you know, and um, and you have all of this amazing financial abundance that is going to come in for you when you put the work into shifting your perspective, shifting your energy, and, and work on releasing whatever happened here that that was not fair. So again, I hope that's helpful. And then we do have a moonology card for you here, and. I was like, when it came out, I was like, that's in addition to the card, the message of these cards, that's also a beautiful message from your spirit guides. And I, I, when I was pulling cards, I said, do you have any additional advice? And it just says, have faith in your dreams. So I would say definitely that's, that's echoing the message of that 10 of pentacles card right there. Um, and, and the, you know, the empress in reverse, it's like, there's a message here about needing to have a little bit more faith that, uh, that the things that you've worked really hard for, are going to pay off for you because you're, you know, I'm seeing in this reading that, that they really are. It's going to come in for you. Um, and that's a very exciting pile one that makes me happy for you. Uh, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed your reading today. If you liked it, please give it a like. Uh, feel free to comment down below and let me know how it resonated with you. If you have any video ideas, I would love to hear that. Uh, and you can subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. I am, I have Hello Pile 2 and welcome to your reading and happy Halloween if you celebrate Halloween. Uh, I just thought I'd be a little bit festive today. Uh, I did ask your spirit guides just for general messages, uh, maybe some advice, maybe some insight, whatever would be helpful to share with you Pile 2 and it seems like they delivered because your cards here today tell me a bit of a story and uh, so I'm going to start with the Five of Swords and this card traditionally is talking about victory at a cost. And that can have a, a few different possible interpretations. Um, it can mean that maybe somebody involved in this situation is so concerned about being right or winning an argument that they're not really concerned with hurting other people's feelings or um, causing other people to feel bad because of, of what they're saying or doing. Um, it can be, you know, somebody who's who's way too invested in the outcome that they're not being ethical in terms of how they get there. Uh, and that can be something that applies either to you or it can apply to other people in your life. This card can also come up when there's a lot of negative energy around us. Maybe um, there are other people in our life who are toxic to be around. Uh, we might be in a toxic situation. Um, it, and to me, in your reading today, I'm not seeing you as the, the instigator of whatever this Five of Swords is. However, there could be some of you watching for, for whom that is the truth. Like maybe there are some of you who um, maybe you didn't even realize uh, what you were willing to sacrifice to achieve a certain outcome, and then it turned out to not be worth it. Uh, which is what I'm seeing with this card being clarified by the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, because the Ace of Pentacles in reverse is generally talking about something that we might have invested our time and energy into that didn't pan out. It didn't It didn't work out the way that we wanted it to, to the point where it might be something we've had to abandon as a lost cause. Like there's just, it, we thought this was the start of a new beginning in terms of, because this Pentacles may be a new uh, career situation, maybe a new project, a new financial avenue, some, something that we were ex probably excited about um, and really putting our, investing our time and energy into. And it, it didn't work out because of something that has to do with this five of swords. So um, it could be because maybe somebody in the situation is toxic. Maybe they weren't willing to commit to the project, even though they said they, they were going to, they, they weren't pulling their weight. Uh, maybe 
something totally beyond your control fell through. Uh, I am seeing it probably is related to other people with this Five of Swords card. Either, you know, they weren't willing to put in as much as you were, um, or maybe they never had positive intentions in the first place, uh, and you didn't you didn't realize that until uh, it was too late. I think is is what I'm getting from this. Um, and as I said, it could again be a message. Maybe for some of you, this resonates that uh, maybe you were investing so much time and energy into whatever this Ace of Pentacles was uh, that, that didn't pan out, that maybe you didn't realize how much you were sacrificing in the process. Uh, and that might have led to some sort of conflict in your life, maybe with other people. Uh, so just take that however it resonates. Um, and then I'm seeing that if we're, we're going in a progression here, I'm seeing that contributing to the reason why the Chariot card is here. Uh, the Chariot card usually brings a pretty positive message. Uh, it usually is talking about somebody feeling like they're they're really in control of their Chariot. You know, they've, they've made a choice about which way to go uh, and they can see the path ahead of them and they're committed to going down a certain path and saying like, I, I feel uh, very excited, I have a purpose, I have a clarity about where I want to go and I'm making it happen. I'm moving forward I'm, and it's a card that talks about success and being successful uh, and, and moving towards your success uh, with confidence. And the way I'm being called to read this card specifically with this design uh, is that you might feel like you, you want to be in this the the energy of the chariot you you want to be moving towards something with clarity of purpose and a lot of drive uh, and I, i'm seeing that because this card is being clarified by the eight of pentacles which is the card about hard work and commitment and dedication and building our skills and really putting our, our whole effort towards something being very detail oriented very meticulous you can see the person on this card like she's just like i'm making a potion i know exactly what i'm doing i have all of my bottles here uh, and i'm building my skill in this area so what i'm seeing is you might be wanting to do that or know that you have something of value to share or to contribute to whatever you're working on. However, you might be confused about which way to go because I think that the person on this chariot card, it says this way and it says that way. And it's like, well, which, which way do I go? I'm, I haven't made a choice yet about what to commit myself to. So I could understand that after if you had made a commitment to this Ace of Pentacles, it didn't work out, uh, perhaps because of the contribution or lack of contribution of other people or because of being too focused on the outcome uh, and or sacrificing too much for it and, and it ended up maybe working with the wrong people or however that card resonates for you. I could see that contributing a lot to this confusion, even though you know you have something worthwhile to contribute, it might be scary and confusing trying to figure out what to contribute to uh, when you've you've had this happen to you. You've had this, this Five of Swords situation happen to you. So I could understand being in that energy. And I will get to the advice from Spirit. Uh, I do want to address the, the Two of Wands reverse. And that's the reason, another reason why uh, I'm interpreting the Chariot card this way is because we have the Two of Wands reversed right next to it. Um, and the Two of Wands, when it's upright, is talking about potential and uh, wanting to see the potential of different avenues. So it's like when it's upright, it can talk about, you know, I'm, I want to go new places and try new things and see what the world has to offer because I can do anything I want and I have all of this, you know, the world is my oyster, basically. You can see on this card, this person is holding a globe in their hand. And so the way that I usually interpret that is I have the world in, in the palm of my hand. I can do anything. I can go anywhere. And it, this energy is currently being blocked. <laughs> and uh, so when this card shows up reversed, I also, I'm sorry if I, if I laugh or giggle. I do this in a lot of videos. When I'm talking about hard energies, um, it's a coping mechanism. I'm, I promise I'm not laughing at you. Um, I know that it can be really difficult to be in these kinds of energies. Uh, it's just uh, uh, my brain's way of coping with that kind of heavy feeling. So I want to uh, give that disclaimer. I promise I'm not trying to make light of your situation. Um, when, when this Two of Wands is reversed, it can talk about not being able to see the potential and uh, basically losing faith 
in, in the idea that things are going to work out in your favor. And it can be talk about, um, because I don't see the potential in, in going out and trying new things, or I'm worried about, I'm really worried that it's not going to pay off or it's not going to be for me. It can be, you know, being stuck in that kind of afraid to try new things kind of energy, probably because of whatever happened with the five of swords, you know, you, you tried something new with this ace of pentacles. It was, it was a new thing and it really backfired in some way. And so I can understand being in that two of wands reversed energy. And so the advice from your spirit guides here, I'm seeing in this four of swords card that is clarifying this two of wands and the four of swords is like the rest and self-care card. Uh, when this card comes up, there's usually a message from your spirit guides here that uh, you have permission to take some time out, take some time, like carve out some time in your day just to take care of yourself, uh, whether, and it's usually a message about resting. So it might be like physically resting. Maybe it's important right now for you to give yourself time to nap. Uh, it, maybe it's important to uh, take some time to like shut off your devices and, and the TV and whatever distractions are around and just sit sit in stillness um, and maybe do some meditation. Uh, and I would say this card's very, also very connected with the next card, which is the star in reverse, which I'll talk about in a second. There's a message with the star in reverse that it's also okay to ask your spirit guides for help. And I would say that's very tied in to this four of swords card here. That's uh, something that I think would also be helpful for you. And something that, that I've learned how to do is, and it felt silly at first, however, I've, got, I've gotten used to it. Uh, when I feel like I'm not sure, or if I, I feel maybe disconnected from the, the guidance that is there for me from spirit, uh, something that helps me is it's sometimes like literally asking out loud, you know, like, even if, if I'm sitting in like a meditative pose to, to literally ask my spirit guides questions out loud and then meditate about it. And even if I don't get like a direct answer immediately, I might receive a message sometime like later in the day or maybe the next day. Uh, it might be something that I, that I see on TV or something that's a synchronicity or something that I have particular symbols that my spirit guides use to just to let me know that they're there um, and that they have my back. And so you can also explicitly say like, okay, I'm going to pick a symbol or I'm going to pick a number or I'm going to pick something, a time on the clock, something. And spirit guides, that's going to be your communication to me that you're here with me and you love me and you're guiding me. Um, and it's okay to explicitly say that and explicitly ask for messages and synchronicities and confirmations if that's something that would be helpful for you so that you don't feel maybe so alone in this situation or, or so overwhelmed or confused about how to move forward or if you're having trouble uh, with faith. Because I could see in, in the, a message in the Two of Wands reversed and the Star reversed a message about losing faith. So I know that doing that has, has really helped me reconnect with my faith because I have to say, you know, I don't, I don't want to make any guarantees, but I have to say for me, I can only talk about what has worked for me. My spirit guides always show up for me when I, when I ask them to, when I need their help. And it might not be like immediately 30 seconds after I ask, but they always, 100% always show up for me. And so it's okay if you need that extra reassurance. It is okay to ask for that. Um, I just thought I, I would throw that in there if somebody needed to hear it. So I am going to talk about the star card now. And the star card, when it, whether it's upright or reversed, carries pretty much the same message. Uh, however, when it's reversed, uh, the message is usually that uh, you're having trouble believing in the star. Because the, the message of the star card is about hope, healing, and inspiration. So uh, it's a, I would say the key word is hope. You know, having having hope for the future and faith that you're being divinely guided, uh, working on your healing, which there's why I think there is a connection here with these this Four of Swords card. Like it's it's taking the time to to focus on self care and, and healing whatever this Five of Swords situation was that happened, and healing your connection with your spiritual team if you need to do that, and finding inspiration. All of that stuff is still there. It just might be currently being blocked or clouded 
because of whatever has happened here that has caused you to be in this two of wands energy. Um, and so I think the advice here is it really, I know I've said this before, is really centered in that four of swords. Take the time, give yourself the time, carve out time however, however you can, even if it's, you know, 15 minutes to go on a walk or, um, or to, to take a, a bath at night or um, to do like a 10 minute guided meditation, whatever is, is helpful for you, whatever that means for you, you're being, I think you're being asked to do that because I think that's going to help you figure out which way to go, figure out what is important and get into alignment about what you want to put your energy and dedication into. Because as I said, with this eight of pentacles, you have a lot to offer. You really do. This Whatever situation happened with this five of swords, it was not a reflection about what you're capable of. It was something that, that just was an unfortunate circumstance that it worked out this way. And I could understand why that would contribute to all of these energies. And as I said, like the advice I think here is to, to take time to slow down and uh, really focus on self-care um, because you don't need to have the answer right now. Because I also like even when cards are reversed, I think their upright message still holds true. Like, I think you do have the, the palm of the, the world in the palm of your hand, especially because we have the chariot here, which usually does carry a positive message about knowing which way to go. I think you, you have access to that information. I think it's just going to take some time and some like allowing your, your mind and body to rest and recover from whatever happened for you to be able to see the path forward. And I think connecting with your spirit guides is also like making a conscious effort to connect with your spirit guides is also probably going to help you with that, uh, if that resonates for you. And then I also want to say, <laughs> no, I talked a lot about the four of swords. The star card <laughs> being in reverse is being clarified by the queen of swords in reverse. And the immediate interpretation that popped into my head when I saw this card was, oh, this person's being too hard on themselves. Like that, it makes sense that this is why they're they're not feeling hopeful or or inspired is because they're they're probably beating themselves up about whatever happened here. Um, and so I think all all of the advice that I, that I just gave uh, with the other cards is is very applicable to um, to this Queen of Swords reversed here. If this is representing your energy, it could also be representing uh, somebody else. Because as I, I did say with the Five of Swords, this could be talking about toxic people in your life. So this, this Queen of Swords in reverse could be somebody in your life. Maybe they were involved in this Ace of Pentacles that didn't work out. Uh, and they could be being very hard on you. The Queen of Swords reverse is not a nice person to be around. They are very harsh with the way that they talk, very judgmental. Uh, they're not, you know, they're really not worried about hurting your feelings. Um, so whether that's you or another person or maybe both, uh, I think there's definite advice here to focus away from, from that person, make a conscious effort to kind of shift out of that energy or to shift away from that person or to walk away from that person if that is something that you are, are currently capable of doing. Um, I know everyone has a different situation, but if there's a reversed Queen of Swords in your in your life, something that is going to help you get away from that and figure out which way you want your chariot to go and have feel like you have more control over the direction of your life and you know what you want to invest your time and energy into is going to be taking that time uh, to rest and recover from whatever happened. Give yourself the, the grace and, and self-compassion uh, that whatever happened here was not a reflection on your worth as a person, that you do have a lot to offer and you are going to find the right way to go because you have the world in the palm of your hand. It's just important to prioritize yourself in this situation. If you have been engaging in negative self-talk, I think it's a definite advice from your spirit guides uh, to maybe stop doing that. Uh, and I know I know how hard it is. I've been there too. Uh, what has helped me is doing affirmations in the mirror. And again, this is something that I felt was very like cheesy and corny uh, the first time I did it. However, it's been very helpful for me in the long term. Uh, it really has helped boost my self-esteem uh, and to be much, much 
less hard on myself. And when I find myself going into a thought spiral where I'm, I'm kind of kicking myself over something that I either did or didn't do or whatever it is, uh, to just say, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to focus on what I did right in this situation or what I love about myself, or I'm just going to do a general affirmation to myself. You know, it's whether whatever that means, like I am brave, I am capable, I am beautiful, I am worthy, I am lovable, I am deserving, I know my manifestations are coming towards me. Whatever is helpful for you in that situation, uh, I think that might be a good idea. And it might be a good idea to do that too, even if, it, if, if it's not you who's this Queen of Swords, if it's somebody external to you, because I think, do, you know, it's... Affirmations are positive anyway, uh, but it, I think that will help you get away from this negative energy and this confused energy, um, and it'll help you flip that star back upright so that you are able to experience that that hope, that feeling of faith, and knowing that you're divinely guided, and being able to actually heal and recover from whatever has happened here. So. I hope that was helpful for you uh, in terms of your tarot cards. And then I pulled a Moonology card and I just asked for any additional advice from your spirit guides. And the card we have here is the full moon in Libra, which says a win-win outcome is forecast. So I think that that's, a, you know, interesting because um, we do have some, some messages about kind of like a, a, a duality here or like two different ways to go and then we have the scales on the card like it's like you know weighing two options we had that message kind of with with the two of wands in reverse and the the cherry like i don't know to go this way or that way i don't know if i should you know try something new and get out of my comfort zone or stay where i am i don't you know i don't really know how to move forward or where to go there's a, maybe an echoed kind of message here that might just be a confirmation that if you resonate with this reading that this reading is for you um, and I would also see this as a confirmation that what I was talking about, about, you know, the, the chariot's a positive message. And I see the two of one, you can be in this upright energy. You can get there. It's just going to take a little bit of work, a little bit of self-compassion, um, and kind of giving yourself the time to, to work out whatever has happened here so that you can figure out which way to go. And I would say like when it says, a win-win outcome is forecast. Like, I think that's definitely saying, you know, you have a, br a bright future. You will figure this out. You're going to get through it. Uh, we can reverse the star. You will be feeling hopeful. You will be able to get back in touch with your faith, whatever that means for you. And I would also say that if this resonates for you, if the, the message of having toxic people in your life resonates for you, there might be a message here about doing all of those things and working on healthy boundaries. Uh, because that's going to help everybody in this situation. Even if wh whatever toxic energy is here is not something that's going to change. Like there are, I, there are people in my life where I'm like, I had to accept the fact that that person wasn't willing to work on their behavior. And when I did that and, and I worked on my own boundaries anyway, and I gave myself the self-compassion and self-love that I knew I was never going to get, you know, that stuff from this person, uh, when I started giving that to myself and then I worked on enforcing my boundaries with that person, I, I felt better, our relationship was better, and every relationship I've had from then on has been healthier because I was able to do those things. So I think that's maybe what the, this win-win part of this message is. And again, there, there might be a need to accept that uh, there are, might be other people or parts of this situation that happened that are, might not change or grow or develop the way we might want them to. And that that's okay. We can still improve ourselves and improve our situations and improve our, our future situations uh, simply by refocusing our energy on the things in this situation that we can control, such as our self-care, for example. So uh, I hope that was helpful, Pile 2. Uh, I hope I didn't ramble on for too long. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like, and please feel free to comment down below and let me know how it resonated with you. And if you have ideas for future videos, I would love to hear them. And you can subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. And I hope to see you in my next video. And thank you very much for watching, Pile 2. Hello there, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading and happy Halloween.
Uh, today I've asked your spirit guides just for some general advice, and this could be maybe some insights, some uh, practical advice, or um, maybe just an acknowledgement of what's currently going on in your life. And I can say, first of all, I want to say, um, I, I know it's a little bit crowded. It might be hard to see all of the cards here. Uh, I had intended originally to do a six card spread, so I made room for a six card spread. Uh, and then my spirit guides insisted on doing an eight card spread, so it's a, a little cramped, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, I do want to say, just from seeing your cards here today, pile three, it seems like you're you're kind of going through a tough time. Seems to me like you're going through it here, uh, and you might be feeling a little bit of isolation, a little bit of hopelessness. Uh, you've had some circumstances happen here, and I'm seeing in these cards that uh, did not work out in your favor, and I could understand why you would be feeling that and feeling that energy. However, I do want to just say, just at the, the top of the reading, um, that these things don't last forever. Uh, these these energies, the challenges in our lives, the tough times that we go through, the, uh, the really hard stuff that we, we need to work through, uh, that stuff doesn't last forever. Uh, so I just want, I want you to know that you're not going to feel this way forever. Um, and I'm seeing, especially in your, your Moonology card here, is letting me know that this might just be a really hard cycle that you're in right now. However, because I, I, I usually end with the Moonology card, I just want to point out it is a new moon card, which talks about a new cycle or a new start. So there, there is something new on the horizon, a new energy on the horizon for you. Uh, this is just an opportunity. I'm hearing, you know, every every challenge is also an opportunity because we have the choice about whether we want to work through it or, you know, how we how we want to respond to it. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in, in this life that's outside of our control. Uh, you know, we can't control other people. We can't make choices for them. Um, and there's some other circumstances. Sometimes things just happen, you know, uh, that are unfortunate. And when those things happen, we, we do have an opportunity to learn and grow and evolve and develop coping mechanisms and develop healthy coping skills um, that can help us, you know, upcycle to a higher vibration, start a new healthier cycle in our life, and respond to these situations if they ever do come up again, which they might because that's life, that's how it works. But um, so I just wanted to throw that out there at the, at the top of your reading, um, because I am seeing, as I said, there's some, some you might be going through a hard, hard time right now uh, with these cards here. So um, I'm going to start with the Queen of Wands. And I do also want to point out um, what I thought was interesting is we have your, their first four cards, and then the bottom row are clarifying the top row. So we have your, your reading kind of bookended by these queens in reverse. And I will get into it, but the first interpretation that popped into my head is that both of these queens do not represent you. So I'll, I'll get into it, but that's I'm kind of working under that assumption. However, I will also provide an interpretation that maybe if, if the, these reversed queens are talking about you. Um, so I'm going to start with the Queen of Wands, and the Queen of Wands reversed is somebody who is usually pretty manipulative. Uh, she is not concerned about sparing other people's feelings. She's going to do whatever she wants to do uh, for her own self-interest. She will manipulate whoever she needs to manipulate to get the things that she wants, and she usually does that by using charisma or her social skills, because it's, it's a Wands card. Um, this could be somebody who wears a facade with certain people uh, of and pretends to be a Queen of Wands upright with certain people. However, beside, behind the scenes, she is, this is somebody who, who needs a lot of attention. Uh, she, she can have like kind of that like main girl's energy. Uh, she just, she wants to be the Queen Bee at any cost. Um, so that's obviously a very toxic energy to be around. Uh, and I mean, usually, like, as I said, I, the, my interpretation of this, based on the other cards here and based on my intuitive reading, is that the, this person is not you. I would see, if anything, you're the figure on the Ace of Wands in reversed card, which is clarifying the Queen of Wands. Um, the, the way I would see this is whoever this Queen of Wands in reverse is, is blocking your Ace of Wands. So I'll get into that in a second, but I did want to say... Sometimes these, these cards, this could not be resonating for you, uh, and it could be that maybe you have been in this energy. 
for for whatever reason, maybe something has happened or it's a coping mechanism. But this, there could be some pe- people listening who for whom they have been in this energy. Um, so I take that however it resonates. As I said, I'm not really feeling that interpretation here. I would see you as this girl on, on the Ace of Wands. And I want to point out the, the girl on the Ace of Wands and the, the woman in the Queen of Wands, they look like mother and daughter to me. So there could be a message here that this, this Queen of Wands in reverse might be a mother figure in your life if that applies to you. Uh, or it could just be somebody in a position of authority here. And what I'm seeing is this: there's a dragon on the Queen of Wands card that is blowing smoke. And I'm seeing that going into the, this campfire on the, the Ace of Wands card. And all of the, this girl's dreams are going up in smoke because of this Queen of Wands. I can see that the Ace of Wands in reverse is talking about something, some, some new opportunity, a new cycle, uh, a new project maybe something that was new that was very exciting for this person that didn't pan out for whatever reason it didn't come to fruition there this talks about a dream that was dashed for whatever reason something is it's either not as exciting it did it wasn't what you thought it was going to be maybe it was something that you were feeling very passionate and inspired about and that has died now and because it's clarifying the queen of wands what i'm seeing is that it was caused by the queen of wands you know they it seems like this person has dashed your dreams to put it that way that's the, how i'm being called intuitively to interpret that but take that however it resonates you know but the, what i'm seeing is there's a person or a situation or uh, maybe a group of people here who have maliciously caused you to lose the inspiration and passion about whatever this was here and it's not anything that was your fault. So I also I want to point that out. This is something that was done to you. It was not something that you did. That I think is an important message that I'm getting from your spirit guides. And I'm going to move into the three of pentacles and the, the eight of pentacles here. Um, I just want to say, like, these cards are telling me a story, you know. Um, and it could be that this is something, something of a pattern here. And I'll explain why. Uh, the Three of Pentacles was a card that wanted to come out of the deck. It flashed itself a couple of times while I was shuffling and then it came out. So uh, I would say that this is an important message here. Uh, the Three of Wands is a card, for me, the um, key phrase is teamwork makes the dream work. So this card can talk about uh, collaborating with other people. And because it's a Pentacles card, it can talk about uh, co-workers, employees, working with a team of people, collaborating with somebody on a creative project, whatever that means for you. Um, and this card also traditionally has a message about being recognized for your work. Uh, and we can see on this card, it looks like uh, we have somebody, an artist drawing pentacles, and then people kind of gathered around to admire the work. Uh, and so this card could be saying that um, that has some is something that has happened for you, or is something that is going to happen for you. The way these cards are laid out, I'm going to say this probably something that, that has happened for you in the past is, uh, you know, you were getting some recognition for what you were doing. People were offering to collaborate with you. People really wanted to work with you. However, this card is being clarified by the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. And so the way I'm being called to interpret that is maybe people were coming towards you to work with you. And then when it came time to actually put the work in, they were not willing to pull their weight. They were not willing to commit to the project. Um, and that's because the, the Eight of Pentacles card, when it's upright, is talking about hard work. And here it's reversed. So uh, this could be... I, I feel like I have to mention the interpretation that this card also sometimes talks about self-sabotage. Uh, self-sabotage. So I don't know if that, if that resonates for you or if that applies to you. Uh, that's not the way I was being called. Like with this this Queen of Wands in reverse and all this energy in this reading right now, uh, the way I'm being called to interpret this is uh, there are people who have made promises to you, come towards you, wanted to work with you in some way, uh, maybe made a, some sort of a financial contribution or investment in you, and then they didn't follow through. Um, and again, it could be you doing that. However, I don't see that in this reading. I think that this might have been something that had either happened recently or it's been a pattern in your life of, um, and it could have been that the situation is related to this Ace of Wands in reverse. Maybe it's why 
this ace never really took off the way that that you wanted it to um so just you know take that however that applies to you but that that's the way i'm kind of intuitively interpreting these cards here um and then we also have this five of pentacles in reverse which is also kind of confirming for me that this is probably an accurate interpretation for at least some of you um the five of pentacles is a card that talks about disappointment, isolation, being locked out of something, being left out, um, feeling like you're never going to be financially secure, feel like it's it's a bad feeling. And then when it's reversed, those feelings tend to be amplified. So uh, it's it's like hopelessness and isolation, which I can absolutely understand why you would feel that way if this these first four cards have been a pattern in your life or have, you know, maybe there was something significant here that, that just happened um, and it, that has put you in this this feeling of, of hopelessness and feeling like, who, who can I trust? I can't rely on anybody. You know, I'm the only one, you know, willing to, to bring hard work and, and integrity to this. And, you know, I, I don't, I really don't know what to do right now um, or whether I'm ever going to be able to find where I belong. And I could definitely understand being in this energy. I think this is your spirit guides, like, acknowledging how you feel. And that, like, it's valid to feel that way. It makes sense why you would be feeling that way. However, when this card is in reverse, there can be advice from spirit that it's time to, it's time to put some conscious effort towards getting out of this mindset. Um, there might be a need for a shift in perspective. There might be a need to, to practice letting go of it. Um, something that has been helpful for me is like literally asking my spirit guides to help me let go of something um, that has been, and to visualize like cutting off a connection between me and whatever I have been lingering on. Um, I don't know if that's helpful for you. That it has worked for me in the past. Uh, I do want to say this card is being clarified by the moon. And the moon can have many different interpretations. Uh, the way that, that, that I'm being called to interpret it is the moon represents secrets and illusions. Uh, there's sides to the moon that we can't see. That doesn't mean they're not there. It just means we don't have all the information. And we definitely don't have the same information that the universe and our spirit guides have. And so it can be, you know, we have to sometimes move forward or make decisions without being able to see the big picture, without understanding why something has happened the way it's happened. Uh, and I'm seeing with this card being upright, there's a message from your spirit guides here that not to to give up hope, you know, to, to you know, I, I see it as a direct response to, to the, the hopelessness and isolation of this five pentacles in reverse. There's a message from your spirit guides not to give up hope because you're not you're not ever really alone. Even if you feel like you can't rely on the other people in your life, your spirit guides are always with you. You are being divinely guided. You are being divinely protected, even if it doesn't feel like that in the moment. I think there's there's a, a, a message when this card comes up about surrendering to the divine because we don't have access to the full divine plan. Uh, it's important to still have faith that there is a divine plan for us, even when we're in the middle of a really hard cycle. Um, and I know how hard that can be. That's I've absolutely struggled with that, even very recently, um, to just have faith and trust that whatever is happening, even if I can't see it right now, will usually have a silver lining somewhere. And, and so I don't I don't want to spit out the phrase like things happen for a reason, et cetera, et cetera, because I think that that can feel very invalidating. And I don't want to invalidate what you're feeling. I want to just take this card as a reassurance from your spirit guides that they, that they are with you, that you can always reach out to them for help when you, you are feeling lonely, when you are feeling like you've been lost or abandoned, other people have let you down. Your spirit guides are always with you and you're never truly alone. So I'm going to move on to this Queen of Swords in reverse. I just, I felt like that was an important message to share. Um, so we have this Queen of Swords in reverse and as I said, I think that this could be related to this Queen of Wands in reverse. Maybe um, it's the same person. 
Maybe there are two people in your life or two different situations in your life that are both have like a reversed queen energy. Uh, it could be maybe you have two maternal figures and they're both toxic. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the same person or it could be this queen of swords could represent you. Um, and the, que the queen of swords in reverse. Uh, the swords is a suit about communication and intelligence. So this queen of swords in reverse is somebody who is using their intelligence and their sharp tongue to cut other people down. And if this is re representing your energy in this situation, it could be that you are being really, really hard on yourself. It could be that you're engaging in negative self-talk. You're damaging your own self-esteem because of the, because of everything that's happened and all of this, these situations you've been in where, where people have not met you halfway. They have not put, invested the way that you have. They've made promises and broken them. They've manipulated you. Uh, and it's not fair. It's not something that you deserve to have happen to you. And I can really understand being in that energy. However, I think it's also important if this Queen of Swords reversed is representing you, it is also important to recognize that you have the power to become the Queen of Swords upright, if that makes sense. You you have the power to use the tools that you have or that, like tools that I'm, I'm going to talk about, including uh, doing affirmations in front of the mirror. Uh, whenever you notice that you're being too hard on yourself or you're engaging in negative self-talk to say, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. And then say three things that you love about yourself immediately, right in that moment. Um, that's been very helpful for me. I know I've my self-esteem has improved a lot since I've started doing that kind of thing. Uh, maybe a, a gratitude practice will, will help get you out of, of kind of a, a more negative mindset if that's something that is helpful for you. Um, and if this Queen of Swords is not you, then I still would recommend doing uh, doing affirmations and, and self-esteem work because I, I think that stuff is positive regardless. Uh, and I think it would help when dealing with this Queen of Wands in reversed person. Um, I think it's important to recognize you are also a queen and you do not have to put up with this person's BS. You do not have to internalize it. You do not have to take it on. It's not about you. You know, some people are just damaged. Some people are just like that. Some people have personality disorders. Some people are not interested in growing or changing or learning from their behavior. And that's not on you to fix that. So it's, it's okay to do whatever you need to do in this situation to make sure that you are safe. And I am also getting the message here that this Queen of Swords might be your energy if you are using that as a coping mechanism to deal with these these other situations in your life and, and your feelings of hopelessness and despair. Um, if that resonates for you, it could be Spirit's way of acknowledging this Queen of Swords reversed is not really you. It's just an imbalanced energy that you're in as a result of what has happened in your life and the people who have treated you badly. So as I said, I'm going to give the same advice. If this Queen of Swords in reverse is you, you have the power to become the Queen of Swords upright and to be in a very balanced energy. And you can still, you know, use your, your intellect and your excellent communication skills, and your direct communication style uh, to get what you want in life. It'll just be in a, in a more healthy way, a more, a more balanced energy where you are taking other people's feelings into account. Uh, Again, only take that if it resonates. Very possible this Queen of Swords has nothing to do with you, and it's maybe this Queen of Wands is also very sharp tongue and, and making you feel very bad about yourself and is very critical. Um, and that's very hard to deal with. And again, I could understand why you might be having a tough time right now if this applies to your life. Uh, I will say this card is being clarified by the Seven of Swords upright. And the Seven of Swords is a card that talks about deception. It talks about people who will betray you, people who will cheat on you, people who, who just really have bad intentions. And with this card coming up next to the moon card, uh, there could be a warning here that maybe you're not aware or willing to accept that this Queen of Wands in reverse does not have your best interests at heart. Uh, or maybe it might be a warning about about this person. Uh, it, I, I don't know if that's something that you need to hear, but if, if it is, then that could be a message here from your spirit guides. Um, it could just be a confirmation that whoever this Queen of Swords in Reversed is, uh, is 
somebody who's not above using deception and lying to you and, and betraying you. Uh, it could be recognizing that that is, is something that has happened for you in this in in whatever the situation is. And it could also be saying um, there is a message here along with the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. I know I mentioned self-sabotage. Again, this won't apply to everybody, but if it does, it could just be a recognition that maybe there's some self-sabotage here. Maybe we're not being 100% honest with ourselves. Uh, and I would see that if if this Queen of Swords reversed is representing your energy, maybe there's a message here based on everything else that has happened here, people who have not met our expectations, people who, who have dashed our dreams, people who have treated us badly, not shown up for us, abandoned us, left us out in the cold, left us feeling hopeless and we don't know why, might have resulted in a situation where our self-esteem is so low that we feel like we don't deserve success and we might be sabotaging ourselves because of that. So if, if that applies to you, I want to say, I understand. I have been there. I have a reversed Queen of Wands in my life and it's not easy. It's really not easy to be in that situation. I commiserate with you and I know this is sometimes annoying to hear. Uh, however, I think it's really important to use use the tools that I've, I've talked about in this video. Try to connect with other people. I know other people in the spirituality community have been fantastic for me. Connecting, learning how to read tarot cards was very helpful for me. Whatever helps get you to a place where you're able to start working through some of this stuff, some of this, this, I do get the sense whatever happened here was, was traumatizing. So I'm going to use the word trauma. You can work through this past trauma and get to a place where it does not have a hold on you anymore. This is a hard cycle in your life. And I did mention with the Moonology card, that hard cycle is not going to last forever. It never does, even though it can feel like it is. Um, there's a new cycle that wants to come in for you, and it's going to come in to, for you when you put the time and effort into working through your fears. And any fear that is being caused by the situation and the stuff that, that has happened to you and the other people not showing up for you, it's not your fault that it happened. And it's understandable why that would create fear. You know, we're just trying to protect ourselves. It's a, a co there's coping mechanisms, there's survival tactics, like sur survival, what's what's the word I want? Survival techniques, I guess, uh, that, that will develop based on things that have happened to us. And those things are, you know, it's not our fault that, that, that those things happened. Um, and as sometimes those, those survival techniques or, or coping mechanisms can help us get through the hard part. However, when that ends, when we're not directly in that situation anymore, it, it is up to us to work through those fears so that it doesn't get to a place where we are in an unhealthy, imbalanced energy. Because when we're, we're stuck in that five of pentacles reverse, then at that point, it can be a situation where we're only hurting ourselves, where the, the fear of never being able to connect with people, of never being allowed into that the pentacles building, of always being let down and disappointed and hurt by other people can can hold us back to the point where we, we are not allowing the, the blessings and beautiful things that are meant for us to come into our lives. I don't Again, I, I don't know how any of this is resonating. That's just how I'm being called to interpret these cards. Um, and specifically, the when the work through your fears card came out, I was like, oh, okay. That definitely helps draw everything else together for me. Um, and I, again, I, I don't want to sound condescending uh, or, uh, you know, I guess trite. I, I just, I don't want to, but this could be a situation where once you kind of shift your perspective and start putting the work into you know rebuilding your sense of self and your and your self-esteem and um, engaging in positive self-talk and taking the time to focus on yourself in this situation and accept maybe maybe there's some acceptance of the fact that this happened that you know other people might not change the way that we we want them to maybe other people don't have the capacity to love us the way we deserve to be loved to take us take care of us the way that we deserve to be taken care of 
And sometimes we need to start kind of showing up for ourselves instead and reparenting ourselves if this is a parent or a parental energy, parental figure in your life. Um, again, I don't know how any of that resonates, but once we start working through those fears, we can get to a place where those fears and those feelings don't have a hold on us anymore. Uh, and uh, again, I can say from experience that as hard as it is to confront this stuff and to, to work through these fears, for me, it has been worth it. And I, again, I, I feel like I'm rambling here. Um, and I, I mean, I hope this reading has been helpful for you, Pile 3. Um, it, I mean, if I'm available, if you, if you want to chat, you can drop me a line in the comments or, or email me. I have my email address in my channel description. Um, I'm always available to talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, and with that said, I am going to re end your reading here just because I feel like I'm just going to keep reiterating the same things over and over. Uh, so if you did like this video, please give it a like. Please comment down below. Let me know how it resonated. Um, and you can also subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. And I do hope to see you in my next video, Pile 3. And thank you very much for watching today.